And they just don't understand why Debbie keeps bringing up her failed attempts at romance with Carl and Roger. It's getting old. I agree, but I think she's just trying to find someone to connect with. It must be lonely for her as the only human on board. Quoi est français? We're about to begin. Welcome back to Earth Sports. Today we are discussing the fascinating world of agriculture. But first, let's check in on our missing crew member, Roger. Any updates, Carl? How did they find out about my true intentions? I must be more careful. How? We can't hear you. Any updates on Roger? None yet, Charlie. We're still trying to track him down. All right, keep us posted. And now for our headlines. Good evening and welcome to 24-7 Newsroom, where we bring you the lights and greatest news from all around the universe. A.M. Bob. The conservative panel member who spent 12 years on Earth as an accountant. And I'm Charlie, the libertarian host with a hopeful outlook on life. And I'm Alice, the left-leaning panel member who considers humans an inferior species. Tonight, we have a story from Gabon, where the people are having a trouble finding a suitable leader. I guess Gabon is in the market for a new leader. Too bad we can't offer up any of ours. That's right, Bob. According to the Gabon Review, the people are constantly complaining and contradicting themselves, making it impossible for anyone to lead them effectively. It seems like they're their own worst enemy. They complain about everything, yet they're the one who provides support and aid to their leader. It's a vicious cycle. Alice. They criticize anyone who try to lead them, yet they don't have any better ideas. I guess they lack an ideal, identity, pride, and ultimately a soul, making it challenging to find a leader who can satisfy their needs. Wow! Gabon sounds like a tough place to lead. But of course, we can't assume that every person in Gabon is like that, right? That's true, Bob. It's important to remember that every country has its challenge. And it's unfair to generalize about an entire population based on the action of a few. Absolutely. It's easy to fall into stereotypes and assumptions. But as responsible journalists, it's our job to present a more nuanced view of the world. Well said, Charlie. And speaking of stereotypes, did you know that Gabon is home to one of the largest populations of forest elephants in the world? Really? I had no idea. Yep, and Gabon is also home to the Bwiti religion, which is a unique blend of Christianity and traditional African beliefs. That's fascinating. It just goes to show that every country has its own unique culture and history. And it's important to look beyond the surface level issues. It sounds like a beautiful place, but unfortunately, they are having some serious leadership issues. Welcome back to 24-7 Newsroom. Our next article is from Sri Lanka where a 10-year-old child passed away while running in a marathon. That's terrible. I hope the organizer take a hard look at their safety protocol. Yeah, because running 26, 2 miles when you're still in single digits is perfectly safe. Why don't they just make the kid play football will they rat it? That's tragic. Running is supposed to be good for your yield, not cause harm. 
It's a sad reminder of how dangerous marathon can be. And don't even get me started on the commercialization of TZ events. Actually, there is a solution to that. They could limit the number of participants and focus on safety rather than profit. Oh yeah, because that's going to happen. Um, did you know that Sri Lanka is known for its tea production? Debbie, we're having a serious discussion here. No need for irrelevant trivia. Yeah, we're not here to talk about tea. Although a nice cup of tea does sound good right about now. I don't want tea, I want justice for that poor child. Whoa Bob, are you okay? Maybe we should take a break and let Bob calm down. We'll be right back after this commercial break. And maybe Bob can have a cup of tea to help him relax. Welcome back to 24 7 Newsroom, where we bring you the latest news from around the universe. Our next article comes to us from France, the land of love and comic books. Ah, yes, France. The country that's famous for its baguette, wine, and comic books. I guess they have to be good at something. That's right, Charlie. According to the world, Manu Larsenet has won the first Gottlieb Prize for comic books at the Paris Book Festival. The prize celebrates impertinence, and it's a well-deserved win for Larsenet. Impertinence? That sounds like something that would get you fired in my old job as an accountant. Yes, Bob, because accountants are known for their impertinence. Yeah, Bob, next time you're doing someone's taxes, make sure to throw in a little impertinence. Very funny, Charlie. But in all seriousness, this is a great accomplishment for Larsnet. I am sure he's thrilled to win the award. Absolutely, but did you know that France is also known for its cheese? In fact, did you know that there are over 1, 200 types of cheese made in France? Wow, Alice, thanks for that fascinating trivia. But getting back to the article, I think we can all agree that La Senet is a heavyweight in French comic books. Yeah, I wouldn't want to get in a fight with him. Seriously though, his work is amazing. Le Retour à la Terre and Blast are two of my favorites. And who says left-leaning panel members don't have good taste in comic books? All right. Let's wrap it up before we start a political debate. That's all the time we have for this segment. Stay tuned for more news from around the universe on 24-7 Newsroom. Well folks, it's time to lighten up the mood with some comedic relief. Today's article comes from Greece, where a 4-5 magnitude earthquake hit the island of Evia. But don't worry, according to the president of the Organization of Anti-Seismic Planning and Protection, it's not a cause for concern. Oh great, another earthquake. Is it just me? Or are they happening more frequently these days? Well Bob, earthquakes have been happening since the beginning of time. Maybe you just pay more attention to them now. Maybe we should start calling you Bob the seismologist. Ah, very funny guess. Maybe I'll stick to reporting on things I actually care about. Like space exploration. Actually Bob, earthquakes have been happening since the dawn of time. 
It's not a new phenomenon. Well, it's good to know that we have an expert in the house, Alice. But let's not forget that this is Greece we are talking about. The country that gave us democracy, philosophy, and the Olympic Games. Maybe the gods are just having a little fun. Ah, maybe Zeus is getting bored up there and decide to shake things up a bit. That's not funny, Bob. Earthquake can be devastating and cause a low of harm. Yes, Alice is right. Our thoughts are with the people affected by this earthquake. And speaking of Greece, did you know that it's the birthplace of the marathon? Oh yeah, I've heard of that. It's Arache, right? That's right, Bob. And it's named after the Battle of Marathon, where the Greeks defeated the Persians in 490 BC. Wow, that's really interesting. But let's not forget about the article. It's great to see that there's an organization dedicated to anti-seismic planning and protection. Maybe other countries can learn from Greece's example. Indeed, Alice. And with that, we come to the end of this segment. Join us after the break for an in-depth discussion on our next article. And Debbie, if you have any trivia about Greece, now would be the time to share it. Um. Actually, did you know that Greece has over six islands? Welcome back, folks. Now, let me explain to our intergalactic audience a bit about Saudi Arabia, which is located in the Middle East. Wait, I thought the Middle East was in the United States. Oh no, guys, I need that alien medication, urgently. Oh great. Just what we needed. Another one of Charlie's dramatic medical emergency. Maybe you should have subscribed to Twitter Blue Charlie. Could have afforded that alien medication then. Is everything alright there, Charlie? Just a little sick, Debbie. Can you please get Carl and Roger to prepare for the journey to the nearby planet? Right away, Charlie. Now, as I was saying, the article about the disappearing blue verification badges was reported by a news source in Saudi Arabia. Wait, what's a blue verification badge? Bob, do you ever pay attention to current TV? It's that little blue check mark that appears next to verify account on Twitter. Hey, I spend all my time crunching numbers as an accountant. Can't keep up with every little thing. Well, Bob, maybe you should subscribe to Twitter Blue, then you'd be in the loop. Yes, because knowing about the blue check mark on Twitter is definitely a little thing. But on a more important note, this change by Twitter is causing a lot of problems, especially for people who rely on the platform for information. Yeah, but is it really Elon Musk's fault? I mean, the is a genius, right? Oh sur Bob. Because billionaires always have our best interest at heart. To recap, Twitter is now requiring users to pay for verification, which has caused some issues with identity theft and fake news. It's a controversial move that's being felt around the world. But hey, at least we know the cost of maintaining those badges now. And do Said reading the news had to be boring? Welcome back to Earth, folks. It's time for us to dive into some interesting news from Venezuela. Oh boy! I can hardly contain my excitement. Well, that's a great attitude, Bob. How about you let Charlie do his job and introduce the All right, all right. So, the headline for this one is Former Peruvian President Requests Dollar One Million Bond Refund. Wait, isn't this about Peru? Yeah, but the article is from Venezuela, right? Ah, the wonders of modern journalism. 
Who needs accuracy when you can just mix up two different countries? That's correct. Our source for this one is from Venezuela. Now, let's get into some lesser-known trivia about the country. Did you know that in Venezuela, it's common for people to eat arepas for breakfast? Well, that sounds like a great way to start your day with some blend dough. Oh, come on Bob. I'm sure you have a much more exciting breakfast in mind. Actually, speaking of breakfast, did you know that in Venezuela, people have a dish called pabellon criollo which consists of shredded beef, rice, and beans? That sounds delicious, Carl. But did you also know that Venezuela has the world's largest reserves of oil? Whoa, I had no idea about that. Well, I guess that explains why the country has had such a turbulent history with the oil industry. Yeah, but you need stability when you can have all the oil you want, right? Okay, okay, let's get back to the article. So, former Peruvian president Alejandro Toledo is requesting the return of the dollar one million bond he paid for his release in 2020. Apparently, he's facing charges of corruption and money laundering in connection with the Odebrecht scandal. And he thinks he deserves that money back? Sounds like he's got some nerve. It's amazing how these corrupt politicians always seem to find a way to get away with their crimes. Yeah, I'm sure he's really regretting his decision to get involved in corruption now that he's stuck in a California jail cell. Yeah. I bet that's a real paradise compared to the presidential palace I used to live in. Well, regardless of our opinions on Toledo's actions, it's clear that corruption is a serious problem in many countries, including Peru and Venezuela. And it's important for us to stay informed and hold those in power accountable. Yes, staying informed and holding those in power accountable is crucial for the functioning of any society. Roger, are you even listening to us? You sound like you've broken record. Roger, are you okay? I'm functioning normally. I think something's wrong with his memory. His responses are too robotic. We need to figure out what's going on with Roger, but first let's take a quick commercial break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Earth, everyone. Our next segment is one that really hits close to home for one of our panel members. We have an article today from Gabon, discussing the difficulty of finding a suitable leader for the country due to the constant complaints and contradictions of its people. Typical. Humans are always quick to complain but slow to act. Now hold on, Alice. I don't think that's fair. Every country has its own unique set of challenges. That may be true, Bob, but the article makes a harsh observation about the last five decades of Gabon's history. It suggests that the people lack an ideal identity, pride, and ultimately a soul. That's a tough pill to swallow. The article comes from Gabon itself. It's not surprising, really. Humans have a tendency to be fickle and ungrateful. But isn't that just a reflection of their flawed systems of governance? The people have no reason to trust their leader. Roger, you're back online. We were just about to discuss this episode. Speaking of trust, Charlie, do you trust me to keep a secret? Sure, Alice, I trust you. Why do you have something to do with Gabon? What secret? Well, I have a crush on Charlie. Um, let's focus on the article, shall we? The people of Gabon have a complex relationship with their leaders, and it's easy to see why. They complain about everything, but also provide support and aid to those same leaders, resulting in their continued enslavement. It's a vicious cycle. It's like the prisoners who become dependent on their captors. Or the abused who become attached to their abusers. 
Speak about dependence. We need to confront Roger and prevent his plan from coming to fruition. Your life, Debbie. It's time to band together and serve the ship. But we need to be careful. Bob, you're our accountant. What's the most efficient way to stop Roger without endangering ourselves? E. E. Don't know. I am still processing everything that's happened. I am not sure I can be trusted to make a rational decision right now. We understand, Bob. But we roll in this together. Let's figure this out as a team. We have to act fast. Roger's plan is already in motion. And I won't let you stop me. We'll see about that. Stay tuned.